we are getting two new vision cards and one new esper in war of the vision this morning uh, i want to take a look at what they bring to the table to see whether it's worth investing there or if you're better uh, skipping and saving for some more pressing uh, things and so let's begin by taking a look at the ur card which i think is the uh, biggest prize here so dreams of heroism first of all is a really cool artwork uh, i like camillo's design and his kind of foolishness in the story and this is just a really cool card to look at um, in terms of stats now the main thing this card gives in terms of ability is some hp and some area resistance for earth units it is one of those elemental exclusive cards and it's a card for earth units so you need to know that so we're going to be comparing it with other cards that give AoE resistance, and then Golem that gives HP, and finally uh, Fleet and Blossom Banquet, because it's the card with the closest stats that I could find uh, to our new card. And so in terms of stats, I would say Dreams of Heroism is actually a really good card. You don't get much HP, uh, but in the EX meta, like the couple hundred HP you might lose from a card doesn't really matter. Uh, characters go in fights with like five, six thousand HP. 200 more or less won't make a major difference. Uh, but I really like the fact that this card has a lot of attack and a lot of magic. It's not top tier in neither of those departments, uh, but it's competitive with a lot of other picks. And so you have a card that you can use as easily on mages as you can on physical attackers, and that's really good. Uh, since it's limited to earth units, at least you don't have to pick like, oh, I need an earth mage or an earth physical attacker. Uh, as long as it's an earth unit, they're gonna have a good benefit offensively and also defensively, because this card also gives six points of defense that's going to stack with everything else your character gets. Uh, and Earth has a lot of units with really high defense. Mont is one of them. Uh, Luel, that got recently released, would also benefit from that quite a bit. Uh, so in terms of stats, uh, out of everything we have on screen, I would pick this one as the best uh, by quite a good margin. Looking at abilities, though, uh, the card is losing a little bit of its value, I think. Um, the individual ability is pretty sick. Uh, you gain 5% HP, sure. Uh, again, if you're an Earth unit only. Uh, you also get 10 slash resistance, and that is really cool. Uh, the slash resistance being on an individual ability means it will stack with Solidus if you use it. And then with a bunch of other uh, pieces of gear for slash resistance, you could go for a slash resist build, even on a character that doesn't have much in its slash resistance. And that makes it much easier to make a character potentially immune to slash or very, very highly resistant. So that's the use for this card. That is really cool. Uh, then if you're King Mont, uh, Pleb Mont, or Lust Princess Mashri, uh, you will get some extra magic resist and agility. Uh, this is pretty cool. Mund is very weak to magic in his regular form, and I think you'll probably put this card on him. Uh, but there can be scenarios where you put this card on King Mund, perhaps, for the magic resistant agility up. I just feel like we just got some really good fire cards, so King Mund is probably going to prefer using these cards over an Earth card, uh, for which he only gets magic resist and agility, but will not get the slash resist and um, HP up. So this is really more for uh, regular Mund. And then if you're playing Mashari and you want to put this card on her, Good on you, you're playing Mashari, so I can't really give you any advice here. Um, so <laughs> that's it for the individual ability. Now, party ability, 13% HP for your entire Earth units is okay. We'll see in a minute how much that actually gives units. Uh, 20 AoE resistance is actually pretty good, right? That will protect you against any kind of AoE attack. Uh, usually... Almost every character now has some form of AoE attacks, so uh, there will be quite a few scenarios where that actually mitigates the damage you take. Um, and then 25% TP up feels very weak. Um, there are very few scenarios in which we can actually run out of TP, uh, and the main one is Tower, which um, we are getting this week as well. So for Tower, you'll have a bit more TP, uh, but let's take a look at what 25% is for a couple Earth units. So looking at Mont, Luel, and Eileen, 
uh, they gain on average a little bit less than 400 HP. While that is okay, uh, it's probably not going to be game changing. Uh, it's not going to allow them to take three more hits. Uh, it might be the difference between uh, dying and surviving perhaps one more hit, uh, but it doesn't feel game changing to me. And then 25% TP up is around 30 to 35. Uh, that's one big TP skill or two small TP skills. It's not a lot. And then you might be thinking, okay, it's a couple more abilities in tower. Yes, but then again, you should just bring a monk and use Chakra on your team and then generate a ton more TP on your team. Uh, there are other ways to generate TP that are much easier and don't require you to max out a vision card. So uh, that ability is really weak. So overall, do I recommend this card? Well, the base stats are actually pretty strong and very versatile. You can use that for any earth unit, which I like. Uh, the abilities are good for bulk, for earth units, right? You get some slash resist and HP individual, and then HP AoE resistance and TP for some reason. Uh, so it will make your earth units bulkier, and bulk is already their core strength. So uh, there's something good there. Uh, but the con is, it is earth exclusive, and there aren't that many earth units right now. I would say it's one of the weaker elements in the game currently. And then the abilities are pretty underwhelming, so even if I was running a mono earth team, I would not pick this card for every fight. I think uh, there might very well be better cards. Uh, so what's my overall verdict? I would definitely skip that. Uh, my intention is to skip it, uh, but then if I do pull it in the future naturally, I'll slowly get shards for it when, uh, whenever they come in the shop so that I can eventually make use of it in the future, uh, perhaps for the Earth Selection Quest or something like that. Uh, but I don't see a need to invest in that right now, especially with the really cool units we're going to be getting in the near future. It just feels like a sink of my resources that I don't need. Now, the MR card is Curl, and it's actually a pretty good one. Uh, but in the future, during the Final Fantasy VII Remake collaboration, we will be getting the Scorpion, I'll name it, uh, vision card as a UR. That's a another lightning exclusive vision cards. They're both for lightning units. Um, so I want to quickly compare these two, just so you know uh, what's coming in the future. First of all, Curl itself. Uh, the card has okay attack, uh, not very high, even for an MR card, and then the HP is also quite average. Uh, what it does have that's really cool is 12% agility on the unit wearing it. Uh, that means on your Nivlu or on your Frederica, for example, you can make sure that they play very early in the fight. Uh, so that's always good, especially for your ranged units. Um, then it's 20 lightning attack, which is Okay, it's the first uh, and only for now vision card that provides lightning attack, so in that sense there is no real competition for it. It will be good if you're looking for another way to increase your lightning damage. Uh, you also get some dexterity, which will slightly increase missile damage, um, also influence your accuracy a little bit and your critical chance. And then acquired AP up if you max the card is pretty cool, it's not a bad ability to have. So. It's okay. Um, it's a bit similar to the Glacial card, which uh, if you have it and you've leveled it, there are scenarios where it's good. Uh, will you always be running it on your lightning teams? Maybe not, uh, but for a lightning raid or for a mono lightning team, it could be a pretty good card. Uh, should you pull for it though? Not really. Uh, their MRs, you will naturally pull it as you go for other stuff. So I would not spend Viz on that, but I would definitely build it uh, if you do get the shards naturally. Now, the UR counterpart that we're going to get during the Final Fantasy VII Remake collaboration has more HP and more attack. Uh, it does not give lightning attack up, so Curl still has that unique side to it. Uh, but this card will give 50% attack, 13% uh, crit rate, and then slash resistance 20% to all your lightning units. Uh, these abilities are all uh, top tier, so uh, while Curl is good, this is great, and uh, there's a difference. So. Uh, yeah, again, don't invest Viz into Curl, uh, but definitely build it as uh, you get the shards. I think that you're going to get some value that way. 
Now, I do want to talk about the Esper because that guy is actually pretty relevant. Um, and we'll compare it to the other uh, three-star MR Esper that we have, and that's Behemoth. Now, Behemoth has more HP, more attack, and more luck, which are the most important cards for an Esper that's tied to physical attacks. Uh, they are tied for agility, and then Curl has some more dexterity. Uh, he's more oriented towards uh, missile attackers, but overall he won't provide you with much more damage if we're just looking at his stats. Uh, 16 agility is still pretty fast though, so that's a good thing for an Esper to have. Um, and then he gives some blind resistance, which does not feel like the most impactful thing to me. Now, his uh, evocation ability is also pretty lackluster. Uh, in an AoE around your character, you have a guaranteed hit ability that deals lightning damage and has a low chance of inflicting paralyze. Uh, we've seen some pretty cool evocation abilities lately, like Phoenix, that's going to increase healing and then restore HP to your guys. Like, we've seen a couple cool things, but this just isn't it. Uh, I don't really see a scenario where I will want to use uh, this evocation over one of the abilities from my characters. Uh, but the board is pretty cool. Uh, in terms of offense, it's really more of an offense-oriented board for lightning characters. Uh, you gain 15 crit damage, 15 missile attack, 15% attack, 25 lightning attack. Uh, do you see a trend here? This is perfect uh, for Nivlu and Frederica. Uh, but you could also forego the missile attack and then just use the lightning attack up. Give this to 9s uh, and to just about any lightning physical attacker. So it's a really solid Esper to make them more damaging. And if you're like me and you've recently respect your Tetrasilphid Esper for evasion and wind attack instead of missile attack, you don't have an Esper to give your missile attackers anymore. Uh, unless you want to spend 50 viz to respec them every time you change your team. Uh, so in that regards, I would definitely build Curl when you do pull him, and uh, if you have enough uh, resources to awaken them to 3 star. Uh, because for now, I think he's the best esper for lightning characters, especially lightning missile attackers. Now, when we get the Final Fantasy VII Remake collaboration again, we'll have the Scorpion Esper. And this guy will have comparable stats. Uh, he'll be giving some lightning attack and slash attack. So he'll be better for some other characters like Cloud, but he won't necessarily be better for Frederica's and Nivlu's of this world. So even when that happens, there will still be a world where you will want Curl on one of your characters. So that was it. Uh, overall, don't pull on the UR card, don't pull on Curl, uh, but when you do naturally pull it in the future, please level the Esper. If you're a fan of Lightning Gunners, he's the best for them. Uh, I think that sums it up. So if you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, it will make it more likely that you see my content in the future. And then as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.